We're down here at the Sport Aircraft Expo in Mount Vernon, uh, Illinois, and this is quite a show that they're putting on here. For a first year event, they're doing very well. In fact, not even for a first year event, they're just playing doing real well here. A great team led by their airport manager, Chris Collins, who's a young fellow with lots of energy, and uh, they're doing great here, I think. Uh, we must have, uh, I think, 40 or 45 airplanes here from different manufacturers. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, there's always a few doing demo, which of course is one of the goals of these things, but if you counted them all up, it'd probably be pretty close to 50. So it's a very credible turnout. Lots of nice equipment here for people to see, and quite a few people that have come in to see it. Now, Dan, we were down at Sebring, I think it was, and we did the uh, big brother of this uh, airplane. Uh, this is the big brother, yeah, the J230. That's the one we looked at down there in Florida, and that is one of their biggest sellers. And that's a remake of the four-seater kit that Jabiru Australia has sold for many years. And these folks have sold a few of them too. But they converted that one since it can't be a four-seater. They made that aft area with its own door into a huge luggage area. Here we've got the J170. Just smaller in every dimension, but still a very capable little airplane with a very good price on it. it. Uses the smaller engine, and this would be a real good candidate for a flight school, for example, or just somebody who wanted to spend a little less and have a little smaller airplane available. How is this coming into the U.S. then, Matt? Well, we're familiar with the Australian kit. It's been around a long time, a lot of them flying, and these fellows have represented that as well. But what they do today is kind of interesting. They bring in that kit, but then they fully assemble it and complete it, paint it, put the engine in, put the instruments in. Basically, it's an American construction starting with an Australian kit. But this is one of those uh, only examples I know of in all of aviation where the engine and the airplane come from the same manufacturer. I don't know any other example like that in aviation today. Now, what type of control systems are you using in this airplane? Well, this uses a dual joystick control, very conventional. Uh, very convenient in this airplane. One of the things that's an advantage actually about a smaller airplane is everything's just a little closer to you. So, but we'll have a look inside the airplane and you'll see it's still got plenty of room inside. But this one up front here, under the hood you might say, is the Jabiru 2200 and that number means it's the four cylinder engine. The big brother over here to our left and the one we looked at down in Florida uses the 3300. That's a six cylinder engine at 120 horsepower. This one's 85 horsepower and on this cute little airplane it's just all the power it needs. So this particular engine uh, has got some other qualities to it that I think endears it to an awful lot of GA pilots. The Rotax is a fine engine, no question about it, but it revs at about 5,000, uses liquid cooling, and it's just kind of different for an awful lot of folks that grew up in the continental and Lycoming world of the United States. The 3300 and the 2200 Jabiru both direct drive. There's no reduction drive in them. There's a no, it's all air cooled and it runs in the uh, high 2000s to very low 3000 uh, RPM range. So for an awful lot of pilots, it just sounds right. The gauges look right to them. And indeed, they've got thousands of these airplane engines flying. Now, what type of uh, control mechanism do they use for steering on the ground? Well, this uses a full steerable nose wheel. It does not have toe brakes on it. It uses a single point lever brake. And we'll see inside the cockpit, it's got the parking feature that's so common on many of these. But a little airplane like this maneuvers on the ramp very well. It's a physically small airplane and it and it turns and handles well, so it's not going to be a problem that you don't have to You said this was a small airplane, but it looks almost as big as the other one inside. Well, it does actually, and it, it looks that way. It's not quite as big as the other airplane, no question about it, but it's got plenty of room inside it, and it's just nicely finished. And here's something I always kind of pay attention to, an armrest. You know, if you're going to use this uh, joystick uh, arrangement that it's got here, which is a single joystick, everything contained in this center uh, console here, which is kind of a nice feature, and all nicely boxed in here so you're not banging up against cables and whatnot. But if you're flying as a student, uh, the instructor can have his hand on the joystick very nicely with you. All the controls very easy and handled, uh, nice to handle. Right in front of that, red for a parking brake or for braking, makes sense. And it's got a parking feature, which is this little adjustment down here that I've got my finger pointing at. I don't want to disconnect it now. They've got it set pretty tightly, and that's fine. But that's what allows you that. And then you can see over here, and I've got one on my side as well, here's the trim adjustment for it. So there's actually a handle over here on just the other side here where my other hand is, and that way both sides can reach that pretty easily without having to reach into the other person's lap. Okay, and uh, operating the flaps on this airplane, pretty simple again, but let me point out one interesting feature. Right here above my hand on the left side, there's a throttle. 
and over here on the other side, there's a throttle. Nice and convenient, you got your inside hand, whichever seat you're positioned in, uh, on the joystick, and you've got a separate hand for your throttle, and you don't have to be conflicted reaching back and forth. On the pilot side, the left side, and right up above us here is the flap indicator switch, so once you've powered up, it's an electric flap situation, and you've got an indicator right up here that shows you the position, although it's easy to just look outside the airplane as well and see where you've set those flaps. This has got a glass panel over again, Dan? Yeah, and this one uses the Grand Rapids technology instrumentation, uh, dual screen arrangement, very similar to the Dynons in some other ways that, uh, that you can switch things back and forth between the screens, uh, but this is the Grand Rapids brand, your radio stack in the center, and also the Grand Rapids engine information system. This has been around, we've had these in the ultralight world for many years, it's a well-proven system and by hitting the buttons you can go through and check each cylinder and get a lot of information. Now Dean Dan, they make a lot of use of room in the back of this airplane. You know, it's a little airplane and it's got not nearly the room in it on the back that the J230, J250 does, but it's got a pretty substantial portion here. If you can get your camera back in here, I'm going to just take this whole box and set it completely down in the baggage area that's back here. It's got an equal amount on the other side. Quite a bit of room back here, so you can really carry what you need in this airplane without any problem at all. On the side here, we've got ones on each side, but here's the example you can see with your camera, your fuel selector, and your con uh, push-pull control linkage here right behind us. more information on the aircraft, then. Where would you go? You just go to their website, which is U.S., like United States, usjabiru.com, and Jabiru, J-A-B-I-R-U. So, usjabiru.com, that'll get you all the stuff from their website. And do you have a flight report on this one, Nick? I'm a lucky guy. I've gotten to fly most of these Jabiru's here, and I've got a report on the 170 and the 230 and the 250 on my website, which is bydanjohnson.com or bydanjohnson.com.